morning, Jess. This is me. I'm looking over your homework, and I'm looking at the first P, uh, the first paired T test. Looks good to me, right? April, June. There's the means, standard deviations. Remember, that's the part you're gonna need for your ADPA, whatever it is, APA formatting, and. <clears throat> Right, the SPSS does this. It says that they're not strongly correlated, which which you know, is going to tell us what's going to happen anyway. So, and really don't need this box, right? This is the difference between the two. So we really don't need this box. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. And this is your money box right here. There's the actual T test. Right? Bam. There's the T-score, degrees of freedom, and the significance. And so the answer is that there was no significant difference between April and June sales. So you got to write that up in ADP. So I'm going to look at your other one. Please hold. So here's your comparison to, what was it, September and November. Again, there's the means and the standard deviations. And there's a correlation, much stronger. Okay, so that should be a hint. If you got a strong correlation, you're probably going to have a significant difference. Probably, but it's not 100%. So now, uh, let's see what else you got here. And really, again, we don't need this box because this is the difference between the means. And uh, it is important, but we don't need to write it up in an APA format. We're just trying to decide if there is a significant difference or not. According to the T test, so I'm going to get rid of this one. And again, here's your money box. So you got a T score of 0.2047. I'm sorry, T score of 2.49. That's big, right? Just remember, yeah. Just it's usually a T score. Anything bigger than two, you're going to get a significance less than 0.05. That's how it works. And there is your proof, right? So that's less than 0.05. So yes, there is a significant difference between the September and November. So you get you did these both perfectly. So now, now let me look at your ANOVA. Okay, this box is good. It tells us how many are in each of the groups, right? At each of the hospitals. Hold on, that's my phone. Sorry about that. And this box is important. It has all the means and the standard deviations of the groups. You're going to need that for your APA formatting. And here's the Levine's test. This is important. It will tell us if our data has violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance, and it has not. Right? That number is much greater than 0.05, so we are good to go. And here is your actual ANOVA box, your ANOVA table. Okay, So we're basically looking at either the corrected model or the IV. And you'll notice the Fs are the same. And small f, big Big sig value. That's the same as a p value. Okay, so there is no significant difference between these hospitals when it comes to age. So this is important. If there is no significant difference, do not do a post hoc test. Do not need a post hoc test. I'll say that again. If you don't have significance in your ANOVA, there is no use running a post hoc test because we already know that there's no significant differences anywhere. So no poke post hoc test if no significance. So we don't need this one. <laughs> right? Didn't need to run a, a Tukey Bonferroni. We did not need to do because we did not make that many um, comparisons. You only use the Bonferroni post hoc when you make too many comparisons. Okay, so that's going to be a good test question. So the legal amount of comparisons you can make is one less than the groups. So we had three groups, three hospitals, so we could have made two comparisons, and we only made one. So we didn't break anything, so we would not use the Bonferroni. So now let's look at the next one. <laughs> oh, yeah, the hamburger guy. So this box is good, right? It tells us how many enter each group and your mean scores, right? You need that for your APA right up and your Levine's test. So you did not violate the assumption of homogeneity variance. In other words, the variance is relatively the same between the five stores. And here is your F. I'm sorry, there's your F. Bam. And it is significant, right? Your your p-values are tiny, tiny, tiny. And you're at a squares, which which tells you what percent of the variance in the DV which would be job satisfaction scores, can be explained by your model. So about 46%, that, that's pretty darn good, okay? 
Don't know what this is, but it has the power on there. Power is important, so you're, the study was good. You, you should report power. Don't know what that is. We don't need the grand means. Post hoc test was good because you did have a significant difference and you're not sure between what stores. Okay, so, so let's look at the stores. And so Lemon Grove versus National City, nada. Lemon Grove versus La Mesa, nada. Lemon Grove versus El Cajon, whoa, no. But yeah, there's a significant difference between Lemon Grove and San Diego because the significance over here is less than 0.05. So you got a difference between Lemon Grove and San Diego. What else you got? We're just looking down here. You got a difference between National City and La Mesa, right? Because of that one right there. What else we got? We got San Diego and National City. Uh, 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 uh. And here's another one. We got San Diego difference between San Diego and La Mesa. Right, because that is less than 0.05. You get the picture, but you would run a post hoc test if you did have significant. Again, do not run the Bonferroni. You only run the Bonferroni if you make too many corrections. So if I didn't make that clear, I apologize. But the only time you're going to use a Bonferroni correction is if you make too many comparisons, and we only made one here. So, But that's it. I hope it helps. I will be in touch. MGZ out.